Guess what, everyone? I bought a AC adapter for my camera, so I'm kind of excited because before I was just like recycling batteries like crazy, and I'm like, this is my first digital camera. My other cameras are, you know, I have these two uh, 1977 fully manual cameras with tons of lenses and tripods and all this junk, and uh, it's very hard for me to give them up. I haven't even given them up yet. I still take pictures with them. You know, I have these canisters of film everywhere, undeveloped. I bring them to my friends' house sometimes to develop them. Sometimes I bring them to the store. It's just like, it's such a pain because you have all this stuff and you're like, ah, oh, i got to get a digital camera. And finally, my latest trip out to Washington, I decided to do the whole uh, digital camera thing. It actually worked out pretty well for years. You know, um, some people call me a technophobe. You know, I'm a blogger. I got this YouTube thing going on, but I'm still one of these, like, oh, I can't make the switch. You know, I, st I still have freaking cassettes, man. I have, my buddy Beryl has them, but I have, you know, all this 80s metal on tape. Tons of tapes. I, I haven't got an iPod yet. The iPod thing is kind of weird because the iPod thing's a little philosophical. It's kind of like, I find that a lot of people with the iPod don't appreciate the music as much. They don't go hunting out. It's just you're sitting at your computer, you're doing your thing. There's been no uh, conclusion whether it ha it, it's actually stealing or not, so... <clears throat> That's for another time. I don't even know. The wireless internet, stealing, CD stealing. Anyway, back to Technophobe. By the way, I was painting today, so don't mind the mess here. Um, but, uh, yeah, this AC adapter thing is kind of cool because now I can just film without, you know, caring about the batteries. I went online last night, and I'm like, why is my camera wasting so much batteries? And every review is like, this is a great camera for the money, but you're going to go through batteries every day. So pretty much after I take three videos, it was like two batteries. And as an environmentalist, it's kind of nerve-wracking anyway, because I'm kind of, you know, being a hypocrite, you know, batteries are the easiest things to get rid of this, some of you may know, so, uh, but, uh, yeah, kind of excited about that, back to technophobia, I, I just, there's a lot of things that you can't experience unless you do it, and a lot of people tend to, like, to sit in their computers and find antiques and stuff, to, to, to me, it just boggles my mind, because the whole idea of antique hunting or book buying or, you know, anything is the hunt, you know, you go to these little tucked in the middle of nowhere used bookstores or garage sales or flea markets or thrift stores and you find cool stuff you know going on you know what you're going to find you know what you're going to get a good deal fine but is it all about just having the stuff or is it actually just the hunt to me every book i have every item you know whether it's a gun or a bicycle or anything was you know there's a lot of stuff that went into it it's a whole it's not like oh one day i was surfing ebay and i found a great deal out in Omaha, or I found on Craigslist, it was like, I, I was driving by, I saw this bookstore, I was actually recently in Montana, and I was driving on the highway, and there was like a cardboard sign in the middle of the highway that said, 100,000 used books, you know, come to my store. Oh, oh cool. So I, I was not going to stop, I was kind of in a rush to get to Spokane for Shabbos, so I was like, can't pass that good used bookstore. So I pull over, pass it once, pass it twice, and I get back, oh, it's a house. Okay, it's a house. I mean, it was in the middle of nowhere. It was Mont Montana Valley used books. It was on the Montana-Idaho border, you know, middle of nowhere kind of thing. You know, I was coming from uh, Missoula. And I walk in, and it's just like you squeeze in, and there's cobwebs and dust, and it's the store is practically pitch black, and I'm trying to see the books. I'm getting a headache. It smells bad, but the smell of bad is a good smell. You know, when you smell, smell is very powerful. I'm, you know, smells powerful. So I'm looking at these books. I'm like, excuse me, ma'am. Do you have a flashlight maybe or something? I can like, oh, to save energy. You know, just pull the strings. I pull the string. I'm like, oh, by Eeyore. Let there be light. You know, it's like a great thing. You know, these little experiences you can't get from the internet. You know, the, and go on and on about social networking sites and cell phones and people, you know, like... In, in New York, you see it the most. You see two people sitting around, both people on their cell phones. They can't stop. I sit in a restaurant with someone, they can't stop freaking text messaging. Concert. Concerts piss me off. Concerts, you're there to enjoy the music. It's a here and the now. Can it wait 10 minutes? No, it can't wait 10 minutes. You have to run outside and talk on the phone. There's always, you know, I, I, I personally keep my phone off a lot. It's on right now because it's the work day, but I'm one of those. You know, if I'm on vacation, I have a rule in my vacation. My road trips... If you want to come into my car, you can use your phone once a week. That's it. And people piss and moan about it, and then at the end of the trip, they thank me because they really experienced it. The whole point of the trip is to get away from reality it, or, you know, go and pursue things that you wouldn't normally pursue and just be talking on the phone and just constantly hawking around. You don't even need to talk to the people. It just I, I feel
feel like people are more sociable on the phone than they are in real life. You talk to people on the phone, it's all great. You see them in real life, they're on the phone. You can't even get through to them. It's like a whole thing. I mean, you know, I, I went to two movies in the last two years. I just saw Superbad and Into the Wild just recently. And the movie before that I saw was like Wedding Crashers or something, right? So I'm in the theater, and people pick up their phone in the theater. It's the new thing. I don't know if you've noticed this, but I people are picking up their phone in the theater, people on their Blackberries, people have these little, you know, I don't know what they're doing. You know, everyone's got some sort of electronic device. My phone's very old. It's cracked. You know, I didn't have a phone until two years ago, actually. My dad forced me to get a, He didn't force me to get a phone. I didn't have a phone. Stop. Period. No phone. And then he's like, you know, you need a phone. I was like, hey, if you're going to pay for it, I'll take a phone. And he paid for it. So it was all good. So that was my experience with the phone. But, it, you know, for the first year, I never really turned it on. I had like 8,000 rolled over minutes. It just kept adding up. And everyone's, dude, you got a cell phone. Now you're supposed to talk to us. I'll turn it on, you know, on Monday or something. You know, that'll be my turn-on date or whatever. And just all the all the technology just keeps it keeps going, and everyone's oh, it's so convenient, and we have more time than ever. More time to do what? To sit on Facebook and on MySpace and hock around with that? Is that is that what we're we're leading into this time? I mean, everyone's working more than ever. All my friends, I don't know about you guys, but. No one works 40 hours, 35 hour weeks anymore. It's 50, 60 hours. And you know, friends in New York, if you work 50 hours, you're lucky. Yeah, 50 hours, I, I don't work. I'm, I'm a sporadic worker though. If I work 50 hours, I want it within three days. So the other four days I can go away. So I'm, I'm, I'm one of those. Every, every free second I have, it's kind of nasty outside right now where I'd be on my bike personally, but uh, I have a couple hours off. I got, I worked from, you know, nine to, when did I work today? I don't know, I painted someone's house, and I'm working my normal job from three to eight. So, you know, and I, you know, sporadic work schedules allow for some things like that. I, I kind of like, you know, there's like this part of me that, that craves that instability of not knowing when I'm going to be working, when I'm, you know, having to mess up plans. I don't like plans. I like just, I like spontaneity. That's my thing. Last year when I went to Alaska, two weeks before going, I, I uh, met a woman in a gas station. She had Alaska plates. I'm talking to her, and you got to go. It's unbelievable. I am off in September. Not off, but I could take off. So I call my buddy Danny. I'm like, dude, we gotta go to Alaska. Dude, two weeks, man. I, I, how can you plan? I'm like, Danny, Northern Lights, and Northern Lights sold it to him. So that was kind of cool. So it's you know the spontaneity of that. You know, this whole. I don't know. I can keep going with this this technophobia. Uh, it just it bugs me. It bothers me that everyone always needs to feel connected, and no one can ever enjoy. That now they're always running to do something else. There's no, there's no like social atmosphere everywhere. Everything is always connected, and we have to. I have to talk to this person. It's always on at three in the morning. Hello, I'm sleeping. Why are you calling? Why the hell did you leave your phone on? Why on earth would you leave your phone on? Shit updates. Forget about it. They talk on the. You know the, these girls. One time I went out on a date, and the girl forgot her phone at home. And we we're like 15 minutes away, and she's like, Oh my god, I forgot my phone. And I'm like, We're going on a date, we're not going that far, she's like, and she literally, I could tell she was debating with herself, she, it's so, it's so rude, but I really need it, what do you need it for, is, you know, are we going to get hit by lightning, I mean, I don't carry my phone on dates personally, but, it, and even the people who, you know, their phone rings on a date, and they pick it up, and they start hawking around, they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, What's wrong with you? You can't stay disconnected for two hours? You know, I, bugs the hell out of me, man. Bugs the hell out of me. But AC Adapter, man, we're just going to be filming nonstop. It's going to be nuts.